going back to your own experience now as you're leading this career network and you think back to the experience you had as a trainee, what advice can you give to these trainees that have these cross-disciplinary interests that you wish you had at the time when you were exploring your own career? So one thing and the first thing I always say is the importance of mentors and advocates and just a friend network to be both supportive in the general sense of just, you know, you've got to get through your days and you're dealing with all of this uncertainty. And so you need friends for that. But more specifically, mentors to help guide the way to open up doors for you, advocates to do more than that, to really help you land the positions you need to or move in the directions you want to. So I think mentorship is the, is the first thing. It's been really good. The second thing is just having a better understanding of the way some of these fields and institutions work. And I think it would be different in different fields. You know, architecture is a very different field than economics, and that's very different than public health or literature or, or ethics or law. But individuals, mentors, and advocates in those areas, um, I think they play a really important role. And so trainees, I think, ought to seek, seek that out. I think those are the two biggest things. You know, I guess the third thing is um, just being able to be patient persevere. I mean, I'd give that advice for any field, but certainly in a field that's emerging, there has to be some patience. And one piece of advice we give to students now is that NeuroX fields won't be labeled NeuroX. So if you Google neuro lawyers, you aren't going to find many, but that doesn't mean that neuroscience and law aren't showing up in a lot of places. And an example would be if you're representing a young adult, juvenile or, or young adult, it is very likely if you're doing criminal sentencing that you're going to be thinking about neuroscience. The job title just says maybe public defender. The job description doesn't mention neuroscience, but increasingly the actual work can benefit from leveraging understanding of neuroscience. And same thing with marketing. It might not say neuromarketer, but if you move into that firm and you've got some better sense of, well, I actually kind of know a little bit about how consumers process this information or how they might respond differently to this ad versus that ad, that can be really advantageous. Or neuroethics, as some colleagues have said, we're all neuroethicists or, you know, every neuroscientist, there's got to be some ethics in that lab. So we're trying to find ways to infuse some of these neuroex careers into more traditionally labeled uh, careers. When you're doing something pathbreaking, it doesn't necessarily mean you need to do something new. It means that you maybe do something traditional and put a new spin on it uh, as a first cut. <laughs>